everybody, welcome to Capital Combat. The name says it all. I'm Hakeem Branch, Rob Jarrell, and today we're going to talk about one of the many loaded boxing cards we got going on this weekend. We're going to talk about the HBO card, which is a triple header, which has Joe Smith versus Sullivan Barrera. Mm -hmm. We've got Robinson Castellanos versus Jerzreal Corrales, and we've got uh, Takashi Miura against Miguel Berchel, yeah, which are three very good fights in which if you are one of those hardcore fans, you already know about it, but you want to call up your guys who don't really watch boxing that much, but like a good fight and say, hey man, you can come on over, turn HBO on your own. Either way, you need to be watching HBO this weekend. That's right. Because these guys are going to bring it, and you also have different styles of fighters to see, so you get different styles of bringing it. So we're gonna start with. I'm not even sure how the card is stacked up. Well, I think uh, because the Corrales fight and the uh, Burchell fight are both title fights. Those yes. are gonna be the higher card fights. And you got Joe Smith and Sullivan Barrera opening up the card. That tells you how much action you're gonna have on this card. Just make sure we're not missing anyone else. Those are all the televised fights. Yeah. yeah. So that's what we're gonna be uh, talking about. So let's start off with, like I said, the light heavyweight showdown between Joe Smith Jr. and Sullivan Pereira. Take it away, Rob. Okay, so in this fight we got two guys who have basically had several fights fall through. Yeah. They're hungry. Yeah. And they're also gunning for that next spot, which is currently occupied by Andre Ward, who has the WBA, the WBO, the WB, no, the, um, the IBF. The IBF light heavyweight belt, and the Donna Stevens, who has the WBC light heavyweight belt. Does Andre Ward have the IBO too? I mean, it's not like the biggest belt in the world, but I think he might have that too. I would say it's that, that next tier with all yeah. with all the belts. But I, I keep my phone on me just in case. Yeah, that's a good thing. I okay. got so much information around in this thing, I stuff gets lost. And IBO, they're the only one that does. Nope, they don't. It's some guy in Russia who probably is fought no one. Um, anyway, but these two guys um, who have faced great competition um of course sullivan barrera's best fight today was uh andre ward which he lost a 12 round decision and who happened to learn quite a bit in that fight from fighting the best and then we had joe smith jr who has made his name by knocking out andre Smofara in one round in one round and bernard hopkins in the i think it was the eighth the eighth eighth round but not only did he knock him out he knocked them out of the ring and into retirement. <laughs> yeah. So um, these guys, again, fights have fallen through. We're talking about with Adonis Stevenson. We're talking about with, um, with Shawnee Monaghan. Shawnee Monaghan. Um, Beard to Beev. Just fights that just couldn't get made. So what they've done is they've settled to fight each other. And I believe this will be to challenge for a belt. Um, because there's a lot of guys that really want to crack at the belt now. Um, and it's going to be a good fight. We last saw Sullivan Barrera knocking out Shabransky. Shabransky. I just saw Shabransky. And what was touted to be, which actually turned out to be a really good fight, but you can see the difference in experience and skill level, even though Sullivan Barrera was the older fighter. And we saw Joe Smith Jr. who kind of exploded onto the scene with that unexpected one-round knockout. Barrera is the more skilled fighter. Yes. He's a better boxer, and I think he's bigger. I think he's like 6'2". Yeah, he's a pretty big guy. Um, and Joe Smith Jr. is about 6 feet, 6'1". Six, um, and it's kind of hard to say who's the harder puncher because we know Joe Smith Jr. has a lot of knockouts. But he gets in more of a bring the pressure type way. And also... Um well, he didn't really start a big step up in competition until he fought Fonfara. But once he stepped up that competition, the knockouts continued. 
So he's got a guy in Barrera who has been dropped. Mm -hmm. uh, he was dropped in his last two fights. He was dropped by Andre Ward in the third round. He was dropped by Sobranski in the second round. But he recovered in both of those fights. He hung on to lose the decision versus Ward, as Rob said. But he went on to knock out Shabransky after knocking him down several times. So he might have what people like to call a cold chin, but that's kind of hard to tell because both times he was caught cleanly when he got knocked down. So maybe there's some defensive lapses in there or, you know, he was in there with some really good fighters and that happens sometimes. Mm -hmm. So that's one of the questions that we have going into this fight. Can Joe Smith capitalize on those same openings that much more seasoned fighters like Shabransky and Ward did? And if he does, can he finish the job that even though Ward won a 12 round decision mm -hmm. and even and he did drop Barrera, but he never seemed that really hurt. It was more like an equilibrium off balance, squared up type of knockdown where right. he, uh, Ward caught him at the perfect time. But he was he was slightly dazed versus Shabransky, but he was able to uh, clear his head and finish that fight, as I just said. And, and knock Shabransky down multiple times before knocking him out. Right. So, if Smith can knock him down, can he finish him? So that's one of the questions. Can he find that opening, take advantage of that opening, and then finish him if he can take advantage of that opening. Yeah, um, being that Joe Smith Jr. really, he likes to get on the inside, he likes to bring a lot of pressure. What I'm, what I'm wary of with Joe Smith Jr. is the fact that he's to go up against Barrera, who has a very educated jab, yeah. a very stiff jab, and can lay the hammer just as much as Joe Smith Jr. Also, his footwork has improved vastly since he's changed trainers um, going to, I believe, Ishmael Salas, who also works with uh, Rigondeaux. And that was his first fight with him after he left uh, Abel Sanchez. Mm -hmm. And you could see a vast, like I said, a vast improvement in the footwork. He went from kind of being like a plotting guy that would work behind the jab, which worked for him, mm -hmm. but against Shabransky, he used a lot of movement. He would bounce in and out lateral movement and then worked that jab and that overhand right and took advantage of a lot of uh, <coughs> Shabransky's defensive shortcomings. Joe Smith Jr., he has a few defensive uh, openings, but we haven't seen anybody really take advantage of him because he's been able to lay the hammer on guys and really get them wary or out of there. And let's look at this. One, Andre Shafar got knocked out. Um, I don't want to say it was a, a flash or unexpected, but he was kind of up against the ropes and he just caught from far with a good punch. And let's now... The first time he was in the middle of the ring when he got him. Okay. And then he finished him on the ropes. But he was still... He had to pick his spot because Andre Shafar was actually very active during that exchange, and he just happened to catch him. Right. And then, let's not forget, he did go up against a 51-year-old Bernard Hopkins, who was well priced his prime. Yeah. Uh, really couldn't pull the trigger, and you saw that versus in the Kovalev fight. Yeah. And he had been all for like two years. So, things were working in his favor. Right. Versus a Barrera who, and Shabransky was not his uh, his last <coughs> his last fight. It was against um, like a Paul Parker, but he's oh yeah, the he, uh, KO King or something. Like, yeah. Oh, yeah, I forgot about that one. That's, that's the one where the B two B fight fell apart, and then he fought him instead. Right, he just needed to get a fight. Right. <coughs> Excuse me, but again, he's fought Andre Ward. Look actually pretty good against a, um, I would say, a rusty Andre Ward who was just moving up to 175. Um, Nevertheless, he still looked good. Yeah, still looked good. He was able to tag Ward with the jab quite frequently. He fought, he jumped in there versus a guy that was highly touted in Shabransky, who was also undefeated. 
Yeah. And then I think that was like a setup for Shabransky to get to the next level. Right. And Barrera said, Apple cart, out of the way. So we're looking at both those and he decided to remain busy instead of being on the shelf. Um, so in this fight, I'm actually going to take Barrera. Um, on, even though he can get caught, I just think he's just improved so much. He's learned a lot. So I have to take him. I want to say I will take him in a decision, but I said, um, I also said Shabransky would, would take a decision versus him. So I'm not going to count him out. And I just think that he's faced fresher competition. Yeah, I agree. I'm going with uh, Barrera as well. But like I said, if Smith can take advantage of that opening that Barrera gives him, it's a very small one. But if Smith can do it, then that's a big kudos to him. But I do think that Barrera can take a decision. Like Rob said, I think his footwork is much better. Uh, his punch selection is a little bit better. He punches cleaner. And that's going to carry him in this fight. So let's move on to the next fight on the card, which is uh, Robson Castellanos challenging Jerzyl Corrales for Corrales' belt. And I'm not sure which one that is. But I just know Castellanos is one of those guys who uh, came up hard, found his stride late, and is now on a tear as like in his last fight, knocking out what Yuri Orcus Gamboa, who was favorite in that fight. And in that fight, he was very heavy-handed. He was accurate. WBA. Showed, WBA, okay. That's Corrales' belt. He showed great head movement, great upper body movement. He was able to, at times, outrange the rangy fighter in Gamboa by like stepping back a little bit, letting uh, Gamboa come in and tagging him with counters, especially that overhand right. Or the, he, it was more of a straight right. Just a boom. Like as soon as uh, Gamboa tried to throw something, mm -hmm. touch him right over the top. But that left hook was, whoo, that left hook was on point that night. Now, if you decide that you want to go to box rec and look at his record, he does have 12 losses. Yes. And but that's, like I said, he came up hard. That's not something to overlook him over because of. Because looking at his record from the outset, he's got a bunch of losses. Right. If you actually look, those losses were very early, and his later losses were to some very, very good opponents. Right. So, like we said, he may have a lot of losses, but he's one of those hard luck guys who's starting to come on right now. And he is up against it against Corrales. Corrales, to me, is like a poor man's wrecking dial. He gives you a lot of movement, gives you a lot of angles. A lot of upper body movement, head movement. His punch selection is even lower than Rigondeaux's. And we know Rigondeaux is a very efficient well, uh, punch output. Yeah, punch output type of guy. Like he, but because he's so accurate, he gets away with it. Mm -hmm. Corrales is not as accurate, but he's got good timing to know when to touch it. He's a southpaw, so he has a good right jab to the body that he likes to catch people with, and especially like the orthodox guy. So if Rob turns that way, and I'm this way, a guy will jab, and he'll move over this way, and jab him right to that, uh, to the hip, and stop that movement, which is a genius move, by the way. Mm -hmm. But he'll move around, and while he's doing so, He's moving back and forth. Then he'll get a wide stance, move around some more. He gives you a ton of looks. And judging by his knockout ratio, you think he doesn't punch that hard, but it's more so that he doesn't punch a lot. So, like, he can hurt guys, but he's not putting together any combinations. I don't think I've seen in the two or three fights that I watched him, I haven't seen him throw any combination. He's a one punch, move around, one punch, grab type of guy. He's not gonna he's not gonna throw combinations. So I mean, well yeah, I mean in this fight I Castellanos has got to be the aggressor. Right. Um they're guys that are definitely rangy. I think Castellanos um 
will probably do a better job of getting on the inside, but he's got to be accurate. And both these guys, so he can't take advantage of his height like he did against Gamboa. Right. And he, like Rob said, he has to stay on Corrales all night. He can't let him get those looks. He can't let him be cute in there. He's got to be in his face and make this a dog fight in order for him to have a chance. If he lets Corrales just sit outside and pick him apart, even with his decent head movement and uh, upper body movement, it's still an uphill battle. And I think he's determined enough to make it that way. So maybe the first couple rounds, is, it looks like it'll be a route. But as those rounds start getting a little... Uh, you know that the fatigue starts to set in. I think he'll start to have more success, or it may be the opposite. Whereas uh, Castellanos comes in, makes it a dog fight, Corrales adjusts, and then we have more of a tactical battle that he takes by decision. Which outcome do you think is going to be the most likely? It's kind of hard to say. Um... Corrales, I think in form, he can make it ugly. He can make him, Castellano, make mistakes. But Castellanos has a wealth of experience. He's fought a lot of guys. I think he's got a more, even though Corrales gave Uchiyama his two losses yeah, in Japan. Uchiyama is a damn good fighter. Castellanos has that. You know, those early losses, learn from the losses, then his competition kind of just went up and he does a lot of those little things that veterans do that make it make them very difficult. And a guy like Gamboa, who's an Olympic gold medalist, has got great competition. He was not able to really hit Castellanos as clean as he would like. Right. Especially for a guy with hand speed like um, Gamboa. And he was tagging Terrence Crawford early, um, very easily. But um, we all know how that ended. But he was not able to hit Castellanos as easily as he was able to hit Crawford. So it's just those little things that he does, not getting hit so cleanly, turning, making sure they go off the shoulder, getting out of trouble, slipping punches. So it's kind of hard to say. I'm taking Corrales, but not. I'm not. I'm not comfortable with the pick. Yeah. Because Castellanos is that guy that could really say. I'm just, again, going to upset the apple cart and I'm going to take this belt, which he would have definitely earned it. Right. So, yeah, I'm, I'm not too confident in who will win this either because, like I said, we have two very distinct outcomes that I can see happening, but then you still got to fight the fight. And then this comes down because Corrales doesn't throw a lot and if Castellanos decides that he wants to be the aggressor, then you might have it where what do you take in the judge in the, um what did the judges take? Do they want to take the activity and aggressiveness or do they want to take the cleaner, more accurate punching? So this could be a split decision type of fight. Yeah, definitely. And uh it'll probably be like a wide Castellanos decision if it's uh if Harold Levin has anything to do with it. Yeah. But um that's his preference, so whatever. Main event. Takashi Miura, Miguel Beltrell, two guys that like to hit you hard, two guys that have been hit hard, two guys that are going to leave it all in the ring. If any fight is a fight that you guys want to tell your friends to tune into, it's definitely going to be this one. Because defense is going out the window. Pretty much, yeah. Um, both guys, no, nah, Rob's right. Defense, not that much. Like, they like to hold their hands up, but guys get through. Burchell likes to use his legs, but only after he gets hit. So, this one's going to be one of those meet in the middle, and we go throw punches until somebody falls type of fight. And this is one of those fights where... The triangle theory may or may not come into play because Burchell knocked out Francisco Vargas. Yep. Francisco Vargas, uh, hold on, I just had it up. 
Um, God. No, wait a minute. Did he knock out? And he lost the knockout to Francisco Vargas. So can Mura knock out Burcho? <laughs> it's possible because both guys can crack. And as uh, we saw in Mura versus um, who did he fight last? Roman. Miguel uh, Roman. And in that one, he was down. And he was down on the cards. And all of a sudden, he wasn't anymore. So, we know that this guy can take a beating and has the willpower to come back and knock you out. And I'm going to say this. I have yet to see a Japanese fighter in a boring fight. Facts. Those guys are coming, and they're coming hard. I mean, uh, I watched right the... Uh, <laughs> yeah, whatever. Uh... <laughs> I watched the Dennis Lebedev fight. I didn't even know my DVR had this set to record, but I was like, oh snap, four hours of boxing. I hit play, and it was some unknown Japanese guy and some unknown Russian guy, and like Rob said, they went at it. I've never seen a boring Japanese fighter. So, and I've never seen a lack of toughness in, those, in Japanese fighters because you literally have to beat them down in order to win. Yes. I could go through names of a lot of Japanese fighters that I like. No, I love to watch. Mm. Yeah. Pretty much all the ones that I've seen on TV. But like we said, this one is going to be that uh, Rock'em Sock'em Robots type of fight. The type of fight that people who just like to see people get hit in the face is going to love. So have them tune in. I have no clue how this is going to go. I just know people are going to get punched, and they're going to get punched hard. People are going to fall down. And if this goes 12, you're looking at a fight of the year candidate. But I would happen to say that as far as names, Miura, these are two guys who pretty much, yeah, defense goes out the window. So Miura might be a little bit more worn than Burchell, because Burchell had Pretty much, uh, again, Rock'em Sock'em fight against Vargas, but Miura, all his fights are like that. He had that versus Roman, he had that versus Vargas, he knocked out Billy Dibb, um, he fought Sergio Thompson, which I think was a... Uh, he fought Uchiyama as well. He fought Uchiyama, so I don't think you're going to get, again, boring. Um, he might be a little bit warm, but that will not stop him from coming forward, so I... I wouldn't be surprised if this goes more than six. Yeah. And you know what? Because of that, it probably is going to go 12. And like I said, it's going to be epic. So, this one, I'm not even going to try and score. I'm just going to sit back, get my popcorn ready, and enjoy the fisticuffs. Yeah, this is a lighter weight fight. So, the action will be very fast. Yeah. Very intense. Yep. And they're both going to leave this ring bleeding. Bleeding, swollen, concussed. And you are going to want more. So, that's it, guys. Hope you all enjoy the fights. Leave your thoughts on the fighters below who you think is going to win. Any questions you got, shoot them out. And if you haven't yet, Go ahead, hit that bell in the corner, subscribe, get the recaps, all our other videos. You won't be disappointed because we talk about stuff. And if you haven't already seen it, it's going to be right here. Check out my breakdown of the cruiserweight and super middleweight tournaments that are coming up starting in September. Yeah, the World Boxing Super Series. And uh, Rob, Rob really went in depth into that one. So you definitely, if you've never heard of the fighters, you'll know who they are. You'll know who to look out for and be able to enjoy it when it happens. So thanks for watching this, guys. And we'll see you in the next episode. Till then, fight on. This is round one and you've already lost. They don't seem to see that everything we've done is coming and gone. My fists are on fire.
vibe I perform till I perspire My demons are in a rage Keep thinking that it's a game I kick rhyme, hurricane I told them I don't play I'm liquid Black Street Fighter Street Fighter